Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this video we're going to take a look at how to recreate the effect on screen and that is great when you're working with wedding photography or you're doing fashion photography or models in great well lit situations such as this example. Now this is a stock image but I'm going to take you step by step through how we got this effect as always, there's a free preset available. The link is in the description below. Stick around to the end of the video because I'll be showing you some additional tweaks that I use with this specific image that go above and beyond what you're going to get with the preset. So let's take a look at how we can do all of that right now. Okay, so this is our starting point. And as you can see, it's a good image, well lit, nice soft light looks pretty cool. Let's take it one step further. So let's go to the basics panel in develop module Lightroom and let's go through step by step what we're going to do to the image. Now the image itself doesn't need a huge amount of tweaks. The highlights, shadows and so on are all looking pretty good. So we're just going to go through and do the stylizing that I want. Now obviously if you're working with an image using the preset you may well find you're going to have to adjust your highlights, shadows, blacks and whites and so on and colors and things in there to get it looking exactly how you want it. So obviously the preset is a starting point. Anyway, let's take a look at how to do this. So the first thing I want to do is just introduce a little bit more warmth into the image. It's a nice, well-balanced image, but that warmth is something that just adds that extra little bit that works well with the glow. So we're just going to take the temperature slider, and we're going to give that a little bit of a boost over to the right-hand side where we start to introduce a little bit more of the warm colors into it. Pretty subtle. Don't want to go too far. That's plenty. So you can see it now just warms the overall image up ever so slightly without affecting the skin tones. Next up, we're going to give it a bit more contrast. So we're just going to come down, boost the contrast up. Again, not going to go crazy with this. Probably around about that point looks pretty good. So we're just bringing out some of the definition. The hair starts to stand out better. We'll compensate for some of this when we go into the tone curve in a moment, but that's a pretty good starting point. Okay. Next thing I want to do is just come down to the presence slider and instead of boosting this we want to take it and give it a slightly soft glow. So let's just drag that down to the left hand side and that will just really soften the overall glow of the image. About minus 30 should be more than enough. If you find that's a little bit too much you can dial it back whatever you want to do to taste. Next thing I want to do is I want to deal with some of the color information in the image. I want to generally desaturate things so I'm going to drag that down to about minus 20. That'll overall desaturate, but I want to give the warmer tones, which will be the skin tones and things, a little bit of a lift. So I'm just going to give those a bit of a boost, but that there looks pretty good. So we just make sure that the skin tones, the hair and so on, all have that nice natural look to them, but they don't sort of become too desaturated with the rest of the image. It still retains that focal point. That's pretty much all I want to do. That's the first part of it done. The basic section completed. Let's move on now to the tone curve. Okay, we're in point curve mode in the tone curve. As always, remember just to check the little icon on the right hand side if you're not seeing the same view as we are in the video. So what we're going to do, add a couple of extra points into this. And we're just going to create a basic S curve. So we're just going to grab the highlights. We're going to grab the shadows. We're going to lift those up a little bit. I'm not going crazy. I just want to flatten the shadows down a little bit and retain the highlights. So that's looking pretty cool. I kind of like that. Yep. I might adjust the shadows ever so slightly and the highlights a tiny bit. So let's take a look at before and take a look at after. So you can see pretty subtle. There's no real in your face alterations there, but it adds that little bit of something to the image. That's all we're going to do in the tone curve. So next we're going to jump into the split toning section and here we're going to adjust the color that's inside the shadows and the colors inside the highlights and this allows us to fine tune and tweak the overall color feel to the image itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of yellow bordering on green into the highlights to start off with. So let's just drag that over around about this position. So you can see we're kind of, there's our yellows, there's our sort of greens. We're sitting in that sort of transition there. And we're just going to give the saturation a tiny, tiny tweak. No more than that. Might even pull that back in a moment. Next up, we're going to grab the shadows and we're going to give them a little bit of warmth. So we're going to add in 
an orange kind of color around about there should be pretty good and we'll grab the saturation and we'll just lift that up around about there actually let's put the saturation back on the highlights actually I think I prefer that without any of that sort of greeny yellow color in the highlights so that's looking pretty good let's just before after so you can see very very subtle there's no again in your face kind of alterations let's just a little bit more into those shadows not too much before and after so you can see it just warms the skin tones up just gives a slight sense of warmth to the overall image itself now we're going to come back in a moment and take a look at the color information in this because the green in the sort of mid right hand side for me is a little distracting and I want to tweak some of the colors but we'll come back to those in a moment let's just jump down to the effects panel and as we've done in most of the videos like this we're just going to grab and put a slight post crop vignette in it to sort of draw your eye into the image again let's take a look at before and after noticeable but not in your face and this is pretty much where we'd end up with the preset so this is the before pretty cool you can see there's not a huge amount of contrast in there and afterwards you can see it gives this lovely dreamy kind of glow which works fantastic for shots like this and wedding photographs and things where you want to add that sort of dreamy kind of effect to it so if you download the preset and apply it you're going to get pretty much exactly what you see on screen applied to your image but we're going to take this one step further now we're going to just take a look in the hsl section and we're going to tweak some of the colors in this to take a look at some of the inherent problems we have in this specific image you can leave the video at this point if you want to or follow along and pick up some tips so like I said earlier, I've got a problem with the sort of yellowy greens we've got on this sort of part of the stairs going up, the steps going up. It's kind of drawing my eye into it a little bit too much. So what I want to do is just remove some of the saturation there to sort of stop that being the focus. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the saturation sliders and we're going to focus on the green and the yellows because they're the two key colors that are going to influence this particular section. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the greens, we're going to bring those down, and the same with the yellows bring those down Ooh, not the aquas the yellows run about there that's looking pretty cool so let's look at before take a look at after so you can see it dulls those down a little bit so it makes them less distracting now obviously if you wanted to you could use the localized adjustment brush and do the same kind of thing by painting this on to just that area to control it and adjust it and do what you need to or with this example you can see there's not a lot of green and yellow information in this image it's predominantly the area of the focus that's the problem so we can use that to target that and there we go that's pretty much what I wanted to show you so like I say this is the before this is where we started, already a good looking image, and this is where we've ended up where we've got that real lovely soft glow adds a real sense of romanticism to the image itself. Well, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you have comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else covered, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.